a little bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> I have the hiccups. everyone, welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. As I'm sure you can tell, I am here by myself, which means I am doing another solo board games video. But today's video is all about solo board games for beginners. So if you are interested in getting to, into solo games and you're like, I don't know where to start, should I just pick up Too Many Bones and start playing that as a, as a solo game for my first one? Maybe that's what you want to do, but that's not going to be a recommendation on this list because this list is really like kind of like a soft launch into solo games. You're like, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure if they're for me. And so I've got a list of ones that you could try just to kind of like dip your toes in the pool of being a solo gamer. The pool of alone time. I'm sure that you're all aware that I'm going to have multiple button shy games on this list. It just is what it is. I do think that they are probably one of the best entry points for solo gaming. And the reason I say that is because they cost like $12. There's not a lot of setup, all that stuff. So you will see some button shies on this list. But of course, you see them on every single one of my lists. There's no surprises here. But the first one that I want to recommend is actually um, two, but you'll see why. And they are new from Button Shy. Just picked them up at PAX Unplugged. I have played these solo, but you can also play them with other people, which is something that I wanna say, if you are thinking about getting into solo games and you're just not sure, my first recommendation is start with a game that you already have that has a solo variant or that you can play at one player. You don't need to go out and buy a solo only game. Actually, pretty much all except for a select few of these games, you can play multiplayer as well. I do think that that is a low commitment, low bar commitment, okay? So the first games that I'm going to recommend are apropos movies or board games or both. This is a game that you could very easily play by yourself. In fact, I think these actually play best at one player or two players. I played them in a larger group when I was away for a work trip and it was fine, but if you have more than that, then they're a little bit less fun and engaging. So great to try solo because this is almost more of just like a solo activity. So in apropos board games or movies, essentially what you have is these two cards laid out on the table. And I can actually just fully give you a bit of an example. So the first card that you pick is going to have a prompt and it's going to must have a hand of cards. So you need to think of a game that has a hand of cards. Let's say Scout, okay? So must have a hand of cards. Then you are going to grab another one and plays three plus. So because Scout does play three plus and have a hand of cards, now you're trying to name a new game. Must have a hand of cards, but does not play at three plus. So like a solo game with a hand of cards. Let's call it Numpsters, whatever it might be. So you continue going until you have done five and you are just trying to be able to name a game or a movie based off of those prompts. And it is just that simple, it is just that quick. It is more of an activity than a board game, so it could be a nice way to launch yourself in. And I call it a soft launch, you know? The next recommendation I have on my list is Chomp from All Play. Now this is a game that you could play with more players. It plays from one to four. The game itself doesn't really change a ton when you're playing it solo versus playing it with other people, which I also think is great because it's not like you have to learn this like huge new rule set to play it solo. In Chomp, you are essentially building out with cards, kind of like, a, a, let's call it a dinosaur park or habitat or whatever. And there's different terrain types and then there's different dinosaurs and then there's different food sources for those dinosaurs. What you're trying to do is you're trying to build out a grid so that you get to a point where each dinosaur is able to eat something. So the vegetarian dinosaurs want to eat like leaves and stuff and the carnivore dinosaurs want to eat some meat. 
you know, and you're trying to build out that terrain, you're trying to get like the biggest grouping of those dinosaurs and you're just trying to score as many points as possible. If you can't feed your dinosaurs, you lose points. This is just very chill. You just kind of like lay it out on the table in front of you. Great if you enjoy doing a little bit of puzzling, if you kind of like to optimize your points and your score. Great game for that, very simple rule set, relatively quick to play, says 20 minutes. I would agree, playing solo, you're probably looking at 10 to 15 minutes actually, it's much, much quicker. I've actually only played this game solo. There are also goal cards that you're gonna be pulling out, so you're trying to like also score points based on goals. So Chomp is one that I would recommend. I think it is a very easy solo game to kind of get yourself into it. Let's move on to something that's a bit bigger, but still, I think, good for an intro to solo games, and that is going to be Horrified. Horrified is another game that you can play with multiple people, and it is a cooperative game that you play with multiple people. Now, when you play this game solo, the rule set itself really doesn't change much. There's a couple like very small tweaks that you do have to make. There's some characters that you can't play as because their special abilities don't make sense when there's only one person, but most of the rules exactly the same. So if this is a game that you already have and you love, and I specifically picked this one because a lot of people already do own this game and do love this game, I have played it solo. It still gives you a great challenge just like the multiplayer game does. The theme is fun. You could play it during spooky season or you don't have to. You can pick and choose what monsters you want to play as set it up and just play. And the rule set for Horrified is not overly complicated. So I do think I picked this one specifically, like I said, because a lot of people do already own it and they do already love it. So maybe you do and you wanna try it. If you're interested in learning how to play this game solo or seeing it played solo, for anybody that doesn't know, I do have a series on Board Game Geek on their YouTube channel called Solo Mode, and Horrified was the game I played in October, uh, and I do go over all of the solo rules in that video. So if you're not sure, you can always check that out and see if it's right for you, but that is Horrified. ka -chow. All right, so the next one that I have on my list is called Kowaku. Now, Kowaku is a tile placement game where you are once again trying to just optimize your scores. So essentially in this game, you have some tiles that are fish and some tiles that are flowers or like statues. On the tiles that are like the flowers or whatever, they have specific scoring goals. As an example, there's one here, it's a yellow flower that is saying that you are going to get two points per yellow fish that surrounds that flower you are playing it to optimize your score. This one does have a slight automa where um, tiles are getting removed from your choices as like the ghost player pretends to be somebody that you're playing against to make it a little bit more challenging. But in terms of an automa, and I didn't add many games, actually this, I think, I think this might be the only one that I've picked that has like an automa, which is like an AI character, because I do think that adds an extra layer of complexity. When I'm thinking of different games that do have like an AI component or like a fake player where you have to almost take like a full turn for them, it just adds a little bit of complexity and upkeep and management. And if you're just getting started, you probably want to avoid that a little. Maybe you don't, maybe you do. Totally up to you. But for me personally, I find that to be a lot more to manage. But this one really isn't because all you're doing is like taking a tile or two away from your options. So it's beautiful, it's cozy, it's relaxing, it's a puzzly type of game. I feel like puzzly kind of games work really well for an intro into solo game because, you know, you're just kind of trying to solve the thing to get as many points as, as you can. And I think this is a really fun one to play solo and I, it's really pretty and I really like it. You know, we haven't talked about a button shy game in about four minutes. So let's do it again, Numpsters. I think at this point, Numpsters is my favorite solo button shy game. And I don't have Rove on this list as an example, or Wild Tales, or some of the other solo games, because I do feel like they're just a little bit more complicated, whereas Numpsters 
It is just so easy to learn. It is, but it's not easy to win. And it's so quick to play. Like this is a game that you can literally play in your hand. You can sit there and you're just trying to make it so that there's one card left on top of your eight because the numbers are eating each other. That's numbsters. It's quick, it's simple. You can sit down and play this like four or five times in a row and still be having a good time. Once again, it's a button shy game, so you're not breaking the bank on it. And it is a solo only game. So this one is a solo only game. I don't think I said, but Kawaku is not solo only. So you can play this with other people. This is a solo only game. So if you are looking to get something that is very specifically designed to play by yourself, I would definitely recommend Numsters. And it's pretty and it's pink and I like that. The next one that I wanna talk about is Lucky Numbers. Now Lucky Numbers is a game that I discovered this past year and I fell freaking in love with it. This is a game for the people who love like Sudokus. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get numbers in like ascending order, not consecutive, but like a one, a four, and if there's a nine there and a seven there, then you need to have something that's higher than a four, lower than a nine, lower than a seven. So you could put like a five right there or a six as an example, but you couldn't put an eight because it wouldn't fit with that. So you're just trying to fill out your grid to the best of your ability to fulfill that goal. Very, very, simple in terms of rule sets but once again it's just a puzzle it's light it's quick this is a game you sit you have your coffee you play little lucky numbers it is not a solo only game so you can play it with other people if you don't enjoy it solo but i like fell in love with this game and i think that this is one of those games that you know you have like your parents or you have your grandparents and they're looking for something to do by themselves because their kids aren't home anymore or whatever. I would honestly get them this game if they're into like puzzles and crossword puzzles and Sudokus because you could just sit there and you can play it by yourself and it's very relaxing and I love it. Food Chain Island. I think if you are going to choose any solo only button shy game to start, I think Food Chain Island is probably the best choice because it is extremely simple to understand, but just like Numster is easy to understand, but it is hard. Like you're not going to win every time. In fact, you're probably not gonna win most times. Uh, in this game, you are building out a grid that has different animals and each animal has a number and larger animals eat smaller animals, but by certain numbers, so 11, can eat a 10, nine, or an eight, but it wouldn't be able to eat the three. And then once you eat it, then you're going to just trigger a special ability and you're just trying to clear the grid until there is only one animal left in that food chain. Top of the food chain is what we call them. That's Food Chain Island. And this is just like Numbsters. You can set it up, you could play it. It does not take a long time to play. Reset it reset it, reset it. Like when I play either of these games, I'm usually sitting down and playing them like four or five times before I move on to something else because that's how like quick they are to play. Great way to kind of get into the solo, solo vibes. And that is a solo only game. Next up, I want to talk about an oink game. This, now not many oink games. In fact, I don't know what other oink games can be played solo, but this one can. Town 66, and I'm just, hold please, or Town 77. I haven't played Town 77 yet, but it is essentially the same game as Town 66, but with one more row and column added. So basically, Town 66 is not a solo only game, but you can play it solo. Uh, and there is kind of like a slight automa, something taken stuff away, but nothing complicated. Really, the rules don't change a ton. But in this, you are just building out a grid, a six by six grid, where every row and every, I just did row, for every column and every row, all of the tiles have to have a unique color and a unique shape. You are building out that grid, that puzzle. It sounds a lot easier than what it actually is because in the solo version, you have piles and you are just pulling from them and you are trying to find a good place to put them. So 
I love to play this solo. It is a great like lunchtime solo game. It doesn't take a long time. Another one you can set up and tear down. Another one that is good for people who love to puzzle and you can play with other people. Okay, the next one is a roll and write game. You can play a ton of roll and write games solo. They are actually, I think they make some of the best solo games because it is kind of like, even when you're playing them with other people, most of the times it doesn't really matter that you have other people around. Um, but this one I wanna recommend is called Super Skill Pinball. There's a variety of ones. This one is Ramp It Up. We have the holiday one. There's a Star Trek themed one. There's just regular with no Ramp It Up. There's a bunch of different ones. You just pick and choose whichever one you like. My personal favorite is the holiday one because it has um, themes from National Lampoon, Elf, and Christmas Story. So if you like any of those things, you will, you know, it'll be fun. So basically, you are rolling dice and doing different things while in a pinball machine. All you're trying to do is optimize your score, score as high as possible, and try and do that before you lose all of the, the balls from the pinball stuff. It is really interesting, it's really fun. It is simple, Each uh, this one comes with four different sets, the holiday one comes with three, and each has its own like slightly different set of rules, and they do kind of scale in complexity also, so you can start with like the one that's considered the easiest. And then like as you learn the mechanics and you move up and you learn the new ones, so it gives you a lot of variety um, in comparison to some other roll and writes which only have like one map or one thing that you're kind of doing over and over again. This one gives you four and it's just fun, it's silly and yeah, if you're looking, if you enjoy like arcade style games and you like the rolling of the dice and trying to like choose your own path and do that stuff, I think that these are great ones to start with. Next up, we have a solo only small box game called Orchard. There is a little series of these games. There's Orchard, there is Grove, and there is a new one which I've talked about. What is the new one called? I can't remember. Anyways, they are nine card solitaire games where you are just essentially building out an orchard and you are trying to score points based on the types of apples that you have and you're trying not to lose apples and, and all of these things. It's just another puzzle. I like this one because it is quick. It plays in 10 minutes. Doesn't take up a lot of table space. It's a great little travel game. It's cute. It's fun. It's simple. So if you have a hard time finding button shy games or getting button shy games, this one might be a little bit easier to find. So you can try that. And last but not least, I wanted to do one more button shy game. I could have put so many on here, but uh, this one I would say is not complicated, but it might be like a slight, just a teeny tiny step above Food Chain Island and Numpsters. And that is the Royal Limited, which is one of the newer button shy games that have come out. I really love the theme of this one. Like you are essentially like building out a train. So this is the conductor. You have four turns to basically get rid of all of the cards in your deck. So you're getting a hand of cards in front of you and then you are building out a train and you have to pay for each card that you play out as a train card by getting rid of cards in your hand. And what you're trying to do, like I said, is you are trying to make sure that there's like no cards left in the deck when you end the fourth round. So you are putting different like VIPs into the car. Each of them have a certain color of train car that they want to go in and then they also have triggers or like um, requirements. So P. Woodson needs to be placed between two odd valued passengers and each train car, so if you play it like this, you're playing it as a train or you flip it and that's a passenger. So if P. Woodson could be placed between this three and this one, basically. And then there's different like restrictions to how you place uh, train cars so like next one would have to have a different color and number so I could place this like yellow one next to it basically so it's it's definitely a little bit more tricksy there's a little bit more to think about 
little bit more management, but still not overly complicated. I think it's really fun and it's a theme that I think a lot of people would really enjoy. Those are some solo games that I would recommend for beginners if you're looking to dip those toes into the pool of soloness. These I think are great places to start. Now, if you're looking for the next step, like what's next? I've played Town 66 and I've played Town 77. Is there a Town 88 and is it harder? The answer to that question is no. Maybe I'll make another video in a little bit about like the next step, like where do you go from here? And then all the way up to like, if you wanna get into some like serious, like deep solo games, kind of where would you go from there? But these I think are great little intro games. I would love to know down below in the comments, what are some games that you started to play when you got into solo games? Do you have any recommendations? Have you tried any of these? I would love to know. But that is everything that I have for you today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, like any of the many that I mentioned today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. For us, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. If you like snacks, check out Munch Pack. We have a $5 coupon, which you love to see. Uh, and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to us here at Foster the Meeple. But that's everything that I have. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you again soon. And now I say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>